početi. Ovako, ja ću onaj... Ja ću danas samo vam ispričati na početku kako je zamišljen ovaj predmet, kako će ovo izgledat, a onda će nam se za nekih 15 minuta pridružiti profesorica Francesca iz Italije, pa će vam ona pričati o zdravom urbanom okruženju. Znači, to je ovo u stvari nastavak onog predmeta koji smo imali prošli semestar, ali sad malo na drugi način. Pa kakav je to drugi način, to ćemo sad objasniti. Znači i ovaj predmet, isto kao i onaj u prethodnom semestru, rezultat je međunarodnog projekta, skraćeno HURBE, odnosno to je na engleskom Healthy Urban Environment, odnosno zdravo urbano okruženje. Projekat finansira Evropska unija u okviru ovog programa Erasmus+. Počeo je u novembru 2018. i traje do novembra ove godine. Ja vas pozivam, kad bude dosado, da pogledate malo ovu strancu projekta, hurbecrtcaproject.eu, tamo možete naći koga interesuje više detalja o ovom projektu. Cilj projekta je da se razvijaju nastavni planovi i programi i da se opremi laboratoriju u oblasti zdravog urbanog okruženja na tri fakultete u Bosni i Hercegovini. To je naš univerzitet u Zenci, odnosno Politehnički fakultet, Oci i građevinarstvo, onda u Sarajevu univerzitet Arhitektonski fakultet, Oci i arhitektura i građevinski ocijek na univerzitetu Džemal Bijeću u Mostaru. Pored ta tri projekta, Univerzitete iz BiH imamo partnere, koordinatora Univerziteta Sapienca iz Rima iz Italije, zatim se učilište u Zagrebu, Arhitektonski fakultet u Zagrebu i Univerzitet za arhitekturu, građevinarstvo i geodeziju iz Sofije u Bugarskoj. Vi ćete imati priliku tokom ovog predmeta da upoznate profesore i predavače sa svih ovih univerziteta, tako da će ovo biti poprilično onako drugčije i ja se nadam zanimljivije nego što je bilo u prošlom semestru, iako mislim da vam nije bilo loše ni u prošlom semestru. Cilj ovog predmeta je da vi razumijete zdravo urbano planiranje kroz metode, strategije, studije, slučaja koji ističu uspješne elemente za jednakost urbanom zdravlju. Šta to znači? S obzirom da je urbano planiranje više naginje arhitektur nego građevinarstvo, onda smo mi ovdje pokušali da napravimo takav predmet koji bi taj proces urbanog planiranja u kojem ćete vi i učestovati u određenim fazama vašeg profesionalnog angažmana, da razumijete kako to funkcioniše, na koji način to radi i da se osposobite za ova tri segmenta. Prvi segment je da znate projektovati i graditi održive i otporne zgrade i otvorene prostore. Znači vi kad završite, kad diplomirate, vi ćete se baviti ili projektovanjem u nekom konstruktivnom birovu ili izgradnjom, znači operativom na terenu. I jedno i drugo, sve jedno, treba da imate neki, da kažemo, širi pogled na to da Znate i jedno i drugo da radite na način da to bude održivo i da bude otporno. Inače, ta održivost, sustainability i otpornost, odnosno resilience, to su vam neke dvije vrlo često spominjane riječi u moderno vrijeme. To sve više postaje aktuelno i sve više postaje važno i to će biti nešto bez čega se neće moći ni projektovati ni graditi. Drugi segment je organizacija. Organizacija prostora u smislu da vi znate efikasno organizovati mješoviti prostor. Mi recimo u Zenci imamo problem gdje malo više od jedne trećine prostora grada zauzimaju u stvari industrijska postrojenja. Inače to nije baš tako često slučaj i to je specifična situacija i onda se mora voditi računa o tome na koji način mogu da koegzistiraju u isto vrijeme i industrijski prostori i urbani prostori za stanovanje, generalno za život, tako da to je drugi aspekt, ta nekakva mješovita upotreba prostora. I treći cilj je da znate projektovati održivu i zelenu urbanu mobilnost, 
s posebnom brigom za osobe s invaliditetom imat ćemo par predavanja o tome o čemu sve treba od računa kad se projektuju zgrade, kad se grade na koji način da to bude pristupačno svima i s druge strane na koji način se mogu riješiti problemi s kojima se recimo zenica suočava. Zenica ima strahovit problem sa saobraćanjem posebno sa stacionarnim saobraćajem, sa parkinzima, tako da ćemo pokušati kroz ovaj predmet da vam damo neka znanja i vještine da vi znate pomoć rešavanju tog problema. Kad završite ovaj predmet, vi biste trebali biti u stanju da projektujete i da upravljate izgradnjom, operativom održive i otporne zgrade i otvorenih prostora. Ovdje govorimo i o niskogradnji i o visokogradnji. Zatim da učestvujete u izradi prostornih urbanističkih planova, ali na način da oni uzimaju ovo zir uticaj na okoliš i na zdravlje ljudi. Znači da znate na koji način, mi smo u prošlom semestru pričali o tome o zagađenom zraku, o buci, o elektromagnetnom zračenju, radijaciji. E sad da vidimo na koji način se mogu projektovati i zgraditi i praviti ti planovi da ti uticaj na okoliš i na zdravlje ljudi budu što manji. I treće, da znate metode održive i zelene urbane mobilnosti, da ih uzimate u obzir prilikom planiranja, projektovanja, izgradnje i upotrebe. Predmet je težak, težak uslovno rečeno, pet ECTS-ova, planirano je da imate dva časa predavanja sedmično i tri časa vježbi, odnosno ukupno 30 časova predavanja u semestru i 45 časova vježbi. Nastavnički tim je Ja ću vam samo malo predavati na ovom predmetu, a većinu će da odrade ovi ostali kolekcije i kolege. Znači, bit će profesorica Maja iz Mostara, ona će održati neka tri predavanja. Profesor Adnan Ujkanović sa Metološko-tehnološkog fakulteta, on će vam pričati o materijalima zelenim i energetskoj efikasnosti. Boris Britvar, arhitekta, on će već sljedeće sedmice održati predavanje, znači on će vam pričati o prostornom planiranju, o ovim zakonskim aspektima, na koji način se radi to prostorno planiranje, koje su to faze i vrste prostornih planova i kako se vi u njih možete uključiti. Također ću učestvovati nastavnici sa ovih partnerskih univerziteta, Rim, Sofija, Zagreb, Sarajevo, Mostar, a vježbe će vam držati astenu i Neira je tu i on sluša ovo predavanje danas. Ovo je sadržaj predmeta tokom ovih 15 sedmica. Znači, sad kad ja završim s ovim uvodom za neki desetak minuta, pridružit će nam se profesorca Džofre iz Italije, iz Rima i ona će pričati malo o kontekstu arhitekture i zdravlja. Znači, na koji način su arhitektura, građenje i zdravlje povezani Nakon toga iduće sedmice će kolega Britvar da vam priča o pravnom osnovu prostornog planiranja i malo koje su, pošto kod nas je država jako komplikovana, on će vam dati pregled koje je zašto nadležan. Vidjet ćete koji tu haos vlada, koliko se mora biti uključeno od lokalnog, kantonalnog, federalnog, državnog, regionalnog, evropskog nivoa, toliko ima tih institucija da je to teško pratiti i on će pokušati da vam da nekakav pregled koji u stvari zašto je nadležan. Iza toga, naredne sedmice, to predavanje će biti negdje u jutarnjim satima, četvrtak, 19. marta, ja mislim. Profesor Balijan sa Šumarskog fakulteta će vam pričati o urbanom zelenilu i gradskim šumama. Ja, interesantno predavanje i ja pozivam Možda ne bi bilo loše da je ostale kolege koji ne slušaju ovaj predmet da to čuju, jer misli da će biti jako interesantno. Onda će nastaviti kolega Britvar sa vrstama prostorno-planske dokumentacije, proceduri kako se pravi i kako se usvaja prostorno-planska dokumentacija od prostornog plana, regulacijonog, urbanističkog, zonskih planova i tako dalje. Nakon toga pričat ćemo Tri teme koje će profesorica Maja da predaje, to su zgrade prilagođene okolini, zdravo ustanovanje, energetska efikasnost. Onda ćemo imati goste iz Bugarske, 
iz Sofije, iz univerziteta, pričat će nam o mobilnosti za zdravo urbano okruženje, ono što sam malo prije spomenuo, znači recimo projektovanje biciklističkih staza, planiranje saobraćaja u gradu, saobraćajnica, znači na koji način se to može projektovati i graditi da bi smo obezvijedili zdravo urbano okruženje. Isto tako, onda ćemo imati predavanje gostiju iz Zagreba, on će vam pričati o stacionarnom saobraću i urbanom zelenulu. Znači, na koji način se rješavaju u gradovima parkinzi, parking mjesta, kako se kombinuju sa parkovima sa urbanim zelenulom. Onda će profesorca Čahtarević sa arhitektonskog fakulteta u Sarajevo pričati. Ovo će biti isto jako interesantno predavanje, malo je onako više tijelo, teoretski, abstraktno, ali je jako dobro i to stvarno preporučujem da obavezno poslušate. Tu je metodologija rješavanja problema u kompleksnim sistemima. Da vidite kako se u stvari ona teorija iz matematike i to posebne grane matematike koja se zove teorija haosa i fazi logika, kako se to koristi za rješavanje problema i za prostorno planiranje. I na kraju semestra kolega moj kao će vam pričati malo o ovim zelenim ekološki prihvatljivim građanskim materijalima, kako se industrijski otpad, ova troska i željezari, na primjer, može koristiti kao građanski materijal, koje su prednosti i nedostaci, i na kraju kako se upravlja građanskim otpadom, to smo tamo ostavili za kraj, jer i kad se gradi nešto, i kad se ruši, nastaje građanski otpad. Na koji način se to rješava? Naravno, u Bosu se to rješava, rješava tako što isto nisiš u potok. Ali da to ne bi tako radili, mi pokušat ćemo da se upoznamo na koji način se to radi ispravno i kako bi to trebao raditi. Što se tiče literature, ovde su nabrojane knjige. Ovu knjigu, prostorno planiranje zašta okoline, imate u biblioteci, ima i kod mene, pa ko hoće može iskopirati. A ove ostale imate u PDF-u, ja ću ih postaviti na ova classroom, tako da možete ih koristiti. On će vam trebati u stvari za pripremu ispita i eventualno možda za onaj dio oko seminarskih radova. Seminarske radove koje ćete raditi na vježbama, on će izgledati ovako. Više ćemo o tome pričati asistentica Neira, ali samo da ispričamo od prilike. Znači na vježbama se radi tri seminarska rada. Jedan će biti na temu urbanog zelenila, evo profesorica Joffre je tu. Hello Francesca, welcome. I will just continue a few more minutes just to explain to the students what what is the purpose of this course and then we will continue. Znači, radit ćete tri seminarska rada, jedan je analiza urbanog zelenula, drugi je analiza stacionalnog saobraća, odnosno parkinga, i treća je analiza pristupačnosti urbanih prostora u dobama smanjenih sposobnosti, invalidima. Radit ćete snimanje jednog određenog dijela grada pomoću drona, prikupljat ćete podatke na terenu, Malo ćete analizirati propisi i literaturu i onda ćete obrađivati te podatke pomoću CADGIS softvera. I na kraju normalno ide prezentacija rezultata. Mislim da će to biti vrlo interesantno, zato što je kombinovano malo na terenu, malo onako teoretski, tako da mislim da će ovo biti poprilično korisni radovi. Evo recimo upravo sad je u toku usvajanje urbanističkog regulacijonog plana za ovo područje grada. Ako prepoznajete, ovo je kineski zid, od kineskog zida do bulevara, gdje su oni, ovaj, prostor, preduzeće prostor plan i radilo analizu zelenih površina, znači nešto ovako ćete i vi napraviti slično, zatim radili su analizu saobraćaja i radili su analizu pristupačnosti osobama umanjeni tjelesni sposobnost. Znači, ovo će faktički biti rezultat vašeg rada. Ovo je način bodovanja, na koji način ćete dobiti ocjenu, Radit ćete ta tri seminarska rada, oni nose po 20% ocjene. Ovdje je nabrojano kako će se to bodovati i na kraju završni ispit radite sa teoretskim pitanjima, nosi 40%. Za konačnu ocjenu uzima se ukupni broj bodova, bez obzira je li to sa seminarskih odavde, znači nije eliminatorno i minimalno je 55% za prolaznu ocjenu. E sad... 
Ja bih s ovim završio. Samo na početku da kažem, profesorica Džofre dolazi sa Univerziteta Sapienca iz Rima, koji je najveći univerzitet u Evropi. On je najstariji univerzitet u Rimu, osnovan je 1303. godine. Imao je, ne znam koliko sad, prošle godine imao oko 120.000 studenta i preko 4.000 akademskog osoblja, ima 155 studijskih odsijeka, tako da je to jedan ogroman univerzitet. E, ja bih sa ovim završio ovo što sam mislio sad da ispričam, a sada ćemo dati priliku profesorci Džofre da priča. Ok, Francesca, I think you can start now. I finished. Thank you very much, Professor Samir, my colleagues inside this uh, important project, and uh, thank you to invite for inviting me. And uh, welcome to all the students. I present briefly myself, even if uh, Professor Samir uh, already did it. Uh, first of all, I'm sorry if my English is not so good. Uh, by the way, you, you will have the slide. If you don't understand some, me, something, you can uh, uh, interrupt me or, uh, you know, and uh, hide your hand and I, and I stop. Um, I start to present this uh, before myself. One minute, I share with you the presentation. Okay, do you see? Let me... Give me a signal of your present, please, students. Say yes, we see, yes. Do you see the we slide? We can see it. Okay, yes, we but, can see it. Okay, but the, you are not a student. <laughs> <laughs> please, so someone please, of the students, some raise your of voice. The students, yes, they are writing in the chat. Yes, we can see. Okay, okay. Um, the topic of his lecture, uh, as uh, maybe Professor Samir already told you, is uh, health, city, and architecture. Uh, I'm Francesca Dufre. I came. I'm associate, a PhD associate professor of Department of Architecture and Design. I'm an architect. I'm not an engineering, but I'm. I'm trying to to give you this topic is. Uh, quite, I, I think not quite, a lot of interesting for both, um, you know, um, for both students, for architects and engineers too. And I teach technology of architecture and management, uh, so project management and construction management at the Faculty of Architecture. Uh, actually, uh, I'm in Rome. Uh, at my home, as you can see here, because uh, of pandemic, pandemic, we cannot uh, uh, move ourselves so so easily. So let's go about this lecture. Um, th this lecture will introduce you about the, this, the, the, the all the definition about healthy city and uh, uh, its relation with the sustainable development goal. Uh, as you know, the World Health Organization um, uh, states that health is one of the uh, prerequisites for a stable system in all the country around the world. But moreover, uh, the Zagreb Declaration in our context, so in the European, in Europe, sorry, uh, pointed out its attention to strength and uh, champion action on health through healthy city network. This is very important. This is, uh, we will see during this lecture, this is a very important uh, uh, step forward. Um, yes, so step forward for, uh, for us uh, as uh, professionals too, because uh, uh, the Zagreb Declaration uh, open a network among all European uh, cities and structure, not cities, but uh, also cities, but, uh, you know, some office, and they are working very, very uh, hardly to identify the strategy, uh, how to build an healthy city. Uh, what we can do in this scenario, of course, uh, architects and engineers, and you will be a future of uh, the next generation of engineers, uh, we play and you will play a strategic role. 
because the concept of health in some way, as we can see later together, is something that is in the, in the nature of our uh, or every our choice inside the project. Uh, so um, we we have this strategic role because uh, we are you know we build the future uh, of our city. Uh, we build the future of uh, housing, transport, uh, and and all the environment that you can see around you and uh, going around in other city if you will. If you, one day you will work in uh, Italy or in uh, other part of the world, the environment of course change, but the needs of health of people will not change. Uh, so this lecture uh, will discuss in the first part the um, global policies and then the European policies. And then we will see some example and uh, what are the relationship between uh, these two concepts? Okay, one is one concept, concept the health the city is something that for us is more, you know, uh, the city is uh, something that we can touch in some way. Health is uh, something that is very difficult to, to touch, uh, but it is possible to measure it, is it possible uh, to provide and uh, uh, to design and uh, strategies for um, for for have a future impact on the health uh, of the citizens that lives in the city. Uh, what are the goals of these uh, uh, lessons? At the end, you will have also I prepared for you a short survey, uh, anonymous surveys, uh, to understand if uh, this lecture. You, you gain some of the um, the concept that we are going to I'm going to present you. Um, the, what are the aims? Uh, increase the knowledge on how the design, the action of design, um, in, on how the design, uh, the healthy city is so important, and uh, why we have to try to uh, connect and they understand the relationship deep deeper relationship uh, among uh, vision experiments and innovation in creating healthy city and uh, uh, to um, I, I just say in English uh, to um, throw a sense a sense say me okay if you don't understand something tell me a sense in your in your mind to understand that to, to know that uh, once again when you will uh, approach uh, a design, a design uh, uh, for a, a pathway, for for everything, for um, a building or um, for a bridge or something, something else. You can have in mind uh, that we are working mainly for people and for improve the health of people or to prevent the. Um, some kind of disease. Start to think about the things that you that make your city healthy or unhealthy. Uh, and uh, according with your past experience, try to uh, to to figure out uh, how the design can address over the next few years or decades because now we are in this now we are in this particular situation so our um, our mind in some way are um, uh, occupied by several problems related to this uh, uh, pandemic period but in this time uh, we learned a lot also uh, we stopped our activities uh, we understand how it's important to respect some rules. And uh, maybe after this period, uh, nothing will be the same in every part of the world. Also, our behavior will change, maybe. And a lot of uh, uh, architects, engineers, and the thinkers, philosophers, sociologists, uh, anthropologists, and so on, they wrote a lot 
in uh, uh, on this topic how we can figure out our future after this period after this uh, dramatic experience and uh, what's the rule of the city the, least, the, the, the city in some way is uh, all the city are really unhealthy also rome where i live is uh, i can say is unhealthy city so what, what what are all the strategies and all the action that we can um, what we say we can uh, act okay for uh, after this period to regenerate our uh, our cities according of course of to new rules so i'm sure that um, a lot of things will change after these uh, short premises, uh, I um, the, uh, we this is the index of the lecture. So we will see the health definition, the relationship between health and environment, uh, the relationship be between city and urban in environment, the world and the European policies on city development, and uh, some uh, mm, Italian uh, that. I consider it as best practices in this field related to different kind of uh, uh, project. And then at the end, we will discuss together and you, you are free to fulfill this uh, uh, little uh, short survey. So let's start. Health definition. When we speak about health, the first thing that I, uh, that I, I think is uh, Health is something that's up to me, but in some way it's uh, up not only to me. Uh, what does it mean? That, of course, I can... Uh, okay, I'm a smoker, so I'm not so... Hey, I'm not so... <laughs> you know... Uh, but if I care of my health without smoking, without uh, uh, having... Uh, no, without having sport or other sport activities, uh, but it's something that that there, is, there are some impacts of our health that not depends from our behavior, but depends of our environment. And then we will see. How is the definition of health? Health is defined by um, World Health Organization as a complete physical, mental, and social well-being. This is uh, one definition in 1940, of 1948, and then a lot of uh, uh, time later, the World Organization, as you can see in the slide, they add. So health is not merely the absence, absence of disease or infirmity. So what does it mean? That to be health healthy uh, it not, not does not mean only to don't have disease or infirmity but is a complete physical and mental and social well-being so it's something that is very uh, huge in the ottawa charter in 1986 at also in so, um, in at uh, you know uh, world level um health is they they state that the health is created and lived by people within the settings of their everyday life where they learn where we learn where we work where we play and where we love in some way uh, so in this picture you can see going around the room uh, last week, I recognized that uh, our Ministry of, uh, um, of Health, Ministero della Salute, uh, put this uh, uh, targa, okay, this uh, target, and quoting exactly, I know that is not so much clear, but quoting, uh, quoting exactly uh, the uh, World Health Organization, uh, you know, definition. Lo stato della salute, la salute è uno stato, the health is a state of complete uh, physical uh, and social, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease. I find it very interesting and I stop myself to, 
to to picture it and uh, and now I'm sharing with you for the for the first time. By the way, health is a right, is a human right. Is my right? Yes. Uh, every uh, people in this world, uh, you know, we, there are some declaration, uh, uh, word uh, declaration, and the health is one of the right. Uh, so that belongs to all people that lead this uh, planet. Uh, but we can say that we can say. The the, the 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 people who study this uh, subject and and uh, me too, they say that there are some prerequisites for health. What does it mean? That there are some condition, uh, in very in, important. Without them, you cannot speak about health as a right. What are these prerequisites? the peace, the shelter, the education, the food, the income, the equity, the social justice, the sustainable resources, the stable ec economic system. So we are, we, are, we are speaking about, for example, some countries that uh, we call developing, developing countries that they don't have these prerequisites. So it's very hard to speak about health in a country where there is no peace, equity, shelter, education, and so on, where the other rights are disattended. This is uh, at the, you know, uh, at the general, not general level, at the global level. Um, we can say also, that is a very important definition, that health is a dynamic state of well-being. Uh, emerging from conductive, conductive sorry, interaction uh, between an individual's potential, life's demand, and social and environmental determinants. We are exactly, we are speaking about our, what we can do uh, in, as a prof future professionals and as researchers is work on these domains social and environmental determinants. Of course, as I told you before, individual potentials, life's demands is something that up to us, up to our DNA and so on. But what, how we build our city, how we'll develop our environment, how we, how we do not respect our environment, okay, it's up to us. Is something that up to our, you know, in this case, our fault. So is uh, health is a result throughout the life course when individual's potential suffices to respond uh, satisfactory to the demands of life. And uh, uh, acro uh, according to uh, the Mekirk model, Mekirk model, uh, now I show you later, is something very simple, but it's very interesting. Um, made by um, some uh, Switzerland uh, doctor, um, I, I, you can say, I can, I can, as you can read here, life's demand can be physiological, psych psychosocial, or environmental. And of course, uh, it varies across individuals and contexts. But in every case, unsatisfactory responses lead to disease. So, what we can say is that an unsatisfactory responses to some environmental condition lead to disease. And we know very well, because you know about the climate, the, the damage of climate change uh, on our environment and the pollution and all the problem that the human action create uh, to go on with this uh, development so uh, not controlled uh, in, in all the part of the world mainly and uh, this is the result according with the makirk model we can say that the health is a, a result of the sum of 
three determinants, the personal, the individual one, so the biological given potential and the personally acquired potential, potential, society and economic environment and physical environment. In this case, the environment we are here, okay, the second, this, is, this uh, second level society is something that up um, the politics, uh, a lot of uh, truth that uh, each country do to support uh, uh, the social determinant, according with the networking of, uh, for example, healthcare in one territory and so on. And in, of course, also environment uh, is something that we see will depends a lot uh, uh, by the, the some truths that uh, each country do uh, um, to to fight uh, to fight the some some really important uh, disease. By the way, the environment the environmental determinants include whole biosphere. In particular, the environment we need for nutrition and recreation. And they include the quality of water, air, soil, building, the place where we live, work, the streets, the open spaces, the park, the park, the, the garden, the park, and so on. Our environment. And of course, we will have the chance, maybe one day, to uh, you know, to transform this kind of environment as an uh, engineer and as architect. And what is interesting also to, uh, to stress that the, the, the determinants uh, have a different kind of impact on human health. And according with this study, with Amara and Kane in, in, Kane, um, in uh, 2003, as you can see, 74% of uh, uh, behavior, lifestyle, and genetic factor, they impact a lot on our health. Also, but also, 20% are related to environmental factors. So we can work, of course, as architect in this 20%, and 10% is related to access to care. What I told you before is uh, the network, uh, how the healthcare system is organized in uh, one country and how you can access to this uh, uh, system. But we have this great chance, environmental factor 20%. And we have another chance if you look carefully at this uh, uh, at the, this um, uh, percentage, because uh, lifestyle, for example, with the, our uh, project, maybe we can, oops, sorry, I want to highlight this, um, because uh, behavior and lifestyle are very important, because when we, for example, um we build a, a, a as in this case a, the a pathway for bicycle okay a very good network for bicycle we are going to change we are, we are going to change the behavior and lifestyles of people what does it mean that in some way our act we can work on environmental factor we can have an impact uh, in uh, uh, transforming our city on in, in environmental factor, but in the same time, we can push the people to have some behavior and to change their lifestyles. For example, I'm, I'm thinking what kind of example I can uh, uh, share with you. Of course, the pathway, okay, for the bicycle. Uh, but for example, another uh, another uh, great uh, you know trend that uh, we are observing uh, around uh, Europe, uh, a lot of uh, cities in Europe, is for example to create some uh, uh, greenery 
uh, inside the city, uh, in the residual space of the city, in order to allow the people to go there, to spend time, uh, to stay, if this is possible, in the open air, and to push them to move outside, to, to have a place, because, you know, greenery is important, not only for, uh, you know, for um, people, but to uh, decrease uh, the heating island in the city, and so on and so on. So maybe think about how many, how many, uh, you know, uh, projects uh, we can, uh, project, see, project, design, and so on, we can, uh, uh, we can do to rearrange the, behav the behavior and lifestyles of people. Um, a very simple example. Before this pandemic, no one, no one had outside, uh, uh, for example, in our faculty, no one had uh, the, um, uh, they taught them uh, to clean, uh, uh, to disinfect their hands. Okay, we changed it with the simple uh, uh, design. Uh, you know, in, in this case, we are speaking about industrial design. This kind of totem, we changed our lifestyle. Okay, if I organize a, a toilet in some way uh, without uh, touching uh, uh, everything uh, with uh, all the sensors and so on. I change the behavior of uh, people and I prevent, for example, infection. If I start to give money, as here in Italy, uh, to buy, all people now have some kind of bonus uh, money to buy bicycle or, uh, I don't know, I don't know in English, I really don't know, like uh, skate uh, with um, monopattino, vabbè, another vehicle, uh, uh, without uh, that, that is not dangerous for the uh, for the for the air, and we have money for to buy electric car and so on. In this case, of course, the behavior and lifestyle of people will change, and uh, the, uh, we have some benefit on, on environmental factors. Of course, so we can say that. If we think globally, we have to be aware that every society on the basis of its culture has a different way of expressing the relationship between among health, disease and social context. So uh, I'm speaking with you, I am living in Italy, uh, you live in Bosnia, we are close, we share the, the same culture. But when I go to Guatemala, for example, that is a country um, in, um, in the Central, uh, Central America, the concept uh, of health and uh, how they, the people um, express this relationship is uh, quite different because it depends from uh, the culture, uh, the, the, the place where you lived. Uh, it's not the case that in this picture that you can see, this is a very interesting uh, exhibition that Oliviero Toscani made. Uh, this picture are, I, I took by mm, the photographer Oliviero Toscani, uh, and the name of this project is Human Race. This is the, the other one, are my picture, and you can see here is uh, one. Uh, um, slang, uh, slums in uh, uh, in Guatemala. This is Rome. This is uh, London. And uh, uh, I, if I remember well, this is uh, some some city in uh, um, U.S. Look, look one, two, three. These four picture. How we build the environment. How we build our city depends of our culture, of course. And uh, this one, uh, you know, we are in a very historic, the room is, uh, you know, very uh, consolidated at a historical place. So it's very hard uh, to, uh, to, <laughs> to regenerate uh, this city. But look, here in London, they destroy and develop 
the the building uh, when they the building are you know not so useful for a lot of motive and another skyline so we have to know to 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 let you understand to that we have the we have to know the awareness where we are uh, designing if i'm in guatemala if i'm in italy if i'm in london if i'm in, uh, you know we have to know very well the context where we are going to i know to to put our drop uh, like a house a street or a garden or something what are the relationship between health and environment? In this picture, you can see the oldest bridge in Rome. This is near my home. Uh, the name is Ponte Milbio. And, uh, you know, Rome is uh, uh, crossed by a river, Tiber, and there are a lot of bridges. This is the oldest one. And uh, it connects two different parts of the city. Mm. And so, and I use this photo to show you what are the relationship with health and environment. Um, look this uh, graph. So we have people, we have lifestyle, community, local economy, activity, built environment, natural environment, a global ecosystem, climate stability, and biodiversity. So. If you, if you, we can uh, uh, choose, as we told before, as I told before, where we can have an impact. Of course, we can, not, we can have, we can have an impact with our activity on built environment, of course, and uh, activities, and in the, uh, the lower level uh, on local community, and so on, and so on, and so on. I'm trying to say you that every kind of transformation on our territory on our city and when i say every kind uh, i mean a street a road a building a bridge everything have a strong impact on the people and we have to be aware of this the best definition that I found that the healthy urban planning means planning for people. We have to put in the uh, in the center of our uh, you know uh, our thinking the people and their health, of course. And uh, healthy urban planning means planning for people, and it promotes the idea that the city is much more than buildings, streets, and open spaces but the city is a living breathing organism the health of which is closely linked to that of its citizens so we are part in some way of the same environment and also the the city uh, start to uh, you know um, has uh, uh, its uh, uh, health okay or maybe hand health because city mainly had hand health this is the main connection so the connection are the people now between health we started from this point health and environment in the middle there is people there are the space and the people and how the people live this space city urban environment of course city this is another um interesting and I, I like a uh, picture of Rome is very dense in in the in the in the center uh, of course the city are uh, the complex system par excellence uh, but in the same way paradoxically they are really resilient so the city and also we as uh, uh, people as human we are resilient but in this uh, resilience we have to find the way to not accept uh, to not accept changing that can damage ourselves 
okay? We cannot uh, accept, for example, a project that is not, uh, you know, um, that is uh, unuseful or that is very far from the needs of the people. The city are resilient, the city are complex system, and at the same time, paradoxically, we are uh, also resilient. But in this guy's resilience, you know, I, I think you know what does it mean. It's a very common term, very, you know, uh, I'd say, um, is in vogue in this uh, time. But what does it mean? That we, we can adapt ourselves to? No, we cannot adapt ourselves. We have to fight to, we have to fight to change our uh, behavior, lifestyle, and our environment. The situation is very, uh, is, uh, is uh, at very dangerous rate inside the city. Why? Because as you can see, the most part of population lives in the city. Here is Europe. So more than 74% of population lives in the, in the city. And in all the world, according with the study, 20, in 2025, so in uh, 10 years, 10, not 10, but by 11, 12 years, we will have around the world 27 megalopolis. What does it mean? 27 cities where live more than 10 million of people. And uh, of course, the global population is increasing. Of course, with me, in this period, the, 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 the pandemia cut a lot. Uh, so uh, this uh, trend uh, maybe is not will not be so high, but you will see when the, this uh, situation will uh, uh, the situation the pandemia will stop and we start to live uh, again in normal way. How many people start to uh, you know, go, um, uh, come in the city uh, to find a better place where to live, uh, a better, uh, a, a good job. Because in the city now, uh, we have uh, uh, all the chance are in the city. A lot of uh, country uh, in the around the world abandoned the, the part of the uh, the countryside, and uh, all the economy is on territory. Is territory economy is the services no not uh, agricultural so maybe we have to uh, do a, a step back and to think how uh, is it possible to um, to um, resolve ricucire uh, reconnect uh, uh, this to a part of our territory uh, of course the mega city in 2030 as you can see in the map, uh, will be not in uh, mainly not in uh, uh, in Europe, but around in uh, Babe, in of course in India, in Africa, in uh, uh, South and Central America, uh, and uh, in the same time, they this mega city will uh, appear where the income for person is uh, very low. Uh, so at the global level, uh, we are going uh, in a very um, dangerous direction uh, mega city in poor people and the people start to move uh, because they can do it uh, fortunately uh, to find uh, other opportunity and uh, as you can see here uh, to, to to think about what is happening in our continent uh, europe is one of the continent that is very old uh, so the fertility rate is very uh, low. Mm, what does it mean? That mm, there are few babies uh, in your country. Your country is younger, for example, than our country, uh, Italy. Cioè Bosnia is uh, a country, Bosnia Herzegovina is uh, a younger country than Italy. What does this mean? That there are more young people than in Italy. Uh, and this is another problem, the, but I don't want to speak about this. I want to show you that inside the city, uh, the 7% the of all the economy uh, turn. Uh, the city is 74% uh, responsible for all the energy consumption. 
uh, the 76, 70 um, percent percent of uh, responsible the cities are responsible for greenhouse and gas emission and finally for 70 percent is inside the city we produce all the global waste this is the situation this is some data uh, took by world earth organization and now i show you what, what what is going on what, what what's the what are the world and the european policies uh, what, how the people that is uh, in hon how are uh, hemp uh, are working on in this scheme you is divided in two parts in the upper part uh, you can see some uh, uh, you know important uh, date a moment uh, at a um, global level and in the same time in the in the low part you can see uh, the develop of the healthy city movement it's not important to discuss a lot about this uh, um, it's important to know that now but it's interesting uh, uh, so you can see our also uh, the website of european project you can find uh, uh, healthy um, this scheme but what is important to stress is that now at the global level we are in the uh, in the framework uh, of sustainable development goals uh, so uh, at the global level from 2015 to 2030 we have to reach all the world I have to reach this uh, uh, okay, all the world we are trying uh, all the countries in the world they have to reach these uh, goals what are the goals that up to us that interest us uh, at the global level of course the third one ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages so for all citizens and the other one make cities inclusive safe resilient but resilient, uh, look, resilient uh, and reactive and sustainable. This is a global level. At the European level, uh, we see later the Zagreb Declaration, and now we have uh, um, the, uh, this kind of this network that is expanding more and more according with the global policies, and they are trying to uh, develop po local policies for healthy city according to the problem of each city. Um, the 11 uh, sustainable um, development goals, the 11 one, what does it mean? Make cities settlement inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. Uh, there are some targets that among the 17, 16, 17 sustainable goal. Uh, all the country have to have to have to reach. And as you can see here, we are involved in each of these targets: safe and affordable housing, affordable, affordable and sustainable transport system, inclusive and sustainable urbanization. Pro, uh, uh, pro, the word, protection of the world and cultural natural heritage reduce the adverse effects of natural disaster floods uh, earthquakes and so on uh, climate change uh, uh, global heating reduce environmental impact of the city waste uh, smog and so on and provide access to, sa to safe and inclusive green and public space. Um, think about the project that you already did in your career as a students and uh, try to uh, think about these uh, goals. If when we designed it or when you, no, we, when you designed it, you thought about all the impact, all the, the consequence of our, uh, you know, uh, project uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, one, uh, in one specific place. 
But at the end, what are the main concepts of healthy uh, cities and uh, how we can identify uh, some uh, uh, best practices? Um, what are the aim of the healthy city? This part of lecture uh, is built more or less on the Zagreb Declaration and the, all the document that the work uh, European, sorry, the European uh, LT City Network uh, published in the in these last um, fourteen years. The aim of LT City to create a health supported environment to achieve a good quality of life, to provide basic sanitation and hygiene needs to supply access to healthcare. So there are several aspects that we have to take in consideration. Especially there is one core in the old uh, document in the Zagreb, as you can see here in the, in the slide, that the, that up to us and the the, the core term the, the core term is the tree and uh, uh, and it is divided in uh, in three okay in the three uh, sub uh, uh, topic caring and supportive environment healthy city should be above all a city for all its citizens inclusive supportive sensitive and of you already uh, discuss it. So, what are the issues? So, what what we can what what are we speaking about? We are speaking about age friendly cities, introducing policies, holistic action plan um, to push the people uh, to uh, empower, uh, to push their participation, independent living, supporting secure physical and social environments and accessible service and support. Okay, these are policies. We are we can do something in this uh, uh, core, in this uh, sub-core, caring and supportive environment. Mm. Yes, of course, if our government give us money, for example, to create a uh, ramp for um, aging old people, they cannot have access to their home, for example. is something that... Uh, it is in the level of the policy. Healthy living. A healthy city provides conditions and opportunities that support healthy lifestyle. Okay, active living. We have to promote making active living, physical activity and pedestrian mobility a core part of city development policies and plan. Again, here we are at the level of cities and development. Of course, uh, students. Our work depends and is strictly connected to the policies of our country. If uh, the uh, I, I cannot decide to uh, to to go on the street, close the street, and say, okay, this is my park. I cannot do it. Uh, so, but we are inside this system. We work to uh, improve this system in some way. In fact, the third level is healthy urban environment design. A healthy city offers a physical and built environment that supports health, recreation, well-being, safety, uh, blah, blah, blah. So the issues what are healthy urban planning, housing regeneration and regeneration, healthy transport, climate change and public health emergencies, safety and security, exposure to noise and pollution, healthy urban design, creativity and livability. If I, now, if I give to each of you one of these topic, you can think very easily how to uh, approach the topic in, in thinking to something to do for your city, uh, a design to your city. Uh, a project, no? something that you can do. Exposure to noise and pollution, okay, in my street. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking as architect in this moment, in my street there is a lot of traffic, okay? So maybe, of course, the policy of, uh, you know, electric uh, a car and so on. But in the, at the same time, 
in this street there is a lot of sun during because rome is always rome is mainly always sunny there is no there is no trees so maybe one idea can be like this but the trees have some problem they need water and they need the space where to they have to be they have to i have to pour it and so on and so on so what i'm what i'm speaking i'm speaking that we have to think uh avanti okay head head and the prefigure what are the action that we can do uh your first job uh, will be maybe i don't know a, a street the renovation of a street or the renovation of uh, a bridge why not or a renovation of a building ecco. think think carefully from the ethic point of view, your responsibility. Think of, yes, of your responsibility. Uh, these are very quickly, it's not so healthy urban planning. We, we already uh, spoke about this uh, topic. Uh, this is important for you. Climate change and public health emergencies, uh, that is tackling, tackling the health implication of climate change in the city, and being vigilant about global changes such as the impact of globalized economy, the free movement of people, and the preparedness for the response to public health emergencies. Look, the movement of people, we are in the full of pandemia. Uh, this uh, they wrote uh, 10 years ago or more, maybe. But, you know, we are all connected. So as a very mm, nice slogan in the TV, think globally and act locally, because uh, it's our job. We have, we have, to, uh, we have to, to think in this direction. Safety and security, and the other, the, oh, sorry, exposure to noise and pollution, uh, this is uh, very important, as I know, for your, uh, for as Professor Samir, uh, the colleague told me, uh, Zenica, uh, Zenica, Zenica uh, has a lot of problem of uh, air pollution uh, for the industry system. So I, I think you can do as an engineer a lot if, of course, the political, uh, you know, <laughs> law allow you to do it healthy urban plan design and also there is another aspect that um interest uh, uh, maybe interested less you but it's important to know that is creativity and liveability and i show you uh, later uh, some uh, some example in this scheme i try to uh, recollect uh, in um, all uh, all the topic uh, of uh, an healthy city and uh, of course we have as we spoke and then as i tried to uh, tell you uh, during this uh, lecture we have different scale of intervention um, because uh, we have um, of course the, 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 the you can see city-wide strategic policies we have uh, by the, the scale of citywide, the state or the scale of neighborhood, the scale of local environment, and of course, everything is connected for reach the lifestyle outcome. Um, I choose, a, I would like, in the future, I will change this example, but these are good examples. Um, in the topic of housing and regeneration, I choose uh, two uh, projects. One is uh, a, um, a park in Rome, and the other one is a project of re housing regeneration, but uh, social housing uh, regeneration. So it's very a special, uh, it's not housing uh, normal uh, for, for all, but it's a social housing in uh, Turin. And then I choose for healthy urban design a square um, in Italy, of course. And for creativity and livability, I show you some picture uh, about some uh, street artist in uh, in a neighborhood uh, in Rome. 
This is a, one of the first example, uh, a park. Uh, why is the best practice for me? Why is it the best practice? Because uh, this park is in the street, in the district in Rome, uh, with the highest uh, percentage of residents with physical, sensory, or physics disabilities. And they, uh, and they this group of architects made this garden very, very simple to allow the people uh, to access, first of all, uh, to, 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 that they can go there uh, very easily. They can do some uh, uh, activities uh, also with the nephews and so on. And they, of course, is something that they, um, that this studio, design studio, uh, designed according with the needs of the uh, population. Now it's working very well. It's very simple. It's a very simple, you know, design. Uh, but... Uh, there is also one part that, that you can cultivate something, but only to show the to, to show to the young, uh, to the children how how to do it, to spend time and uh, where there is anything around before, because it, here is in the neighborhood, you can see very very new building, is not in the center of uh, in the center of Rome, and now it's working. The people go there, they spend their time, they have. Uh, uh, you know, some greenery, uh, organized greenery, and uh, and that's it. A group of architects did it. Um, this is another example quite interesting. Uh, is uh, a very... Uh, Torino, Turin, is a city in the north of Italy. They started a very, very huge, uh, you know, um, program of housing regeneration. Uh, it's very, very interesting in all the cities. This is one of the first buildings that they regenerate, uh, not so uh, so long time ago. Uh, we are in uh, this, uh, um, I would say, quartiere, in this uh, uh, quarter, in this uh, part of the city where there is the biggest market uh, in Europe and is a very multi ethnic. Eh? multi-ethnic uh, um, surroundings and also there are a lot of port apart abandoned as you can see the, the before and after uh, they regenerate this building that was uh, totally destroyed occupied by uh, several kind of people but what is interesting also that they open uh, I, allora, I went there, and you can see also the building site still, uh, but they open a square in front of this building in the way that people can stay, uh, join to the, the, the other. So they, and they used a lot of new materials, and it's quite interesting. Uh, for example, all of these um, colored uh, square that you see in this uh, facade and in this part of the building are uh, photovoltaic cells and uh, for example they use to uh, uh, for the isolation inside the the blocks uh, the the wall they use uh, um, a new material of uh, made by uh, paper uh, and so on so it's very very interesting uh, for different kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, for different kind of um, a reason. Uh, first of all, not only for the material, first of all, because uh, uh, so you can see here the first uh, uh, day of uh, opening uh, where a lot of people go there uh, and uh, it, it is quite interesting. The other one is a, a little, a very little intervention in the middle of room. We are in the uh, in uh, historical part of Rome is a, a, a very, um, you know, um, small square. Uh, the name is Piazza Benzizza. Uh, but they organized in this, uh, as, as you can see in the, in, the, in the drawings, they organized the greenery in the way that when you are inside for these hills, little hills of greenery, you don't see the, uh, you don't hear, sorry, the noise 
of the car around. And now they see that this little square is every time full of people. In this period, no. But in the past, it was every time full of people, children that play, and it's very a comfortable pay, pay place. At urban design, walking, cycling, uh, uh, but, uh, what, what can say, you know, these are two pictures. In, in, in the one, uh, we are in Rome. So uh, in, the, in the first one, here in the, in, the, in the open greenery, the people, um, the people sometimes they use the, the space as they want. Uh, so they take a bike and they go. The, on the other side, here in Italy, here in Rome especially, they started with this new, uh, they started organizing uh, uh, the new pathway for bicycle, uh, removing uh, the car, one, um, uh, one spay, one uh, carreggiata, vabbè, you understand, removing, uh, try narrowing uh, the street. Uh, and during this period, uh, they, they started to do a lot uh, but I, I have to say, I have to confess to you uh, that the citizens are not so happy because uh, uh, there is traffic. Uh, the you know the the car the, the, the space for car is uh, um, narrow, and we will uh, every change inside our uh, context environment uh, needs time to be accepted. Uh, of course, and this is another point that we have to take in consideration. So, uh, for that, it's very important the participate to uh, to make to make that people can participate in the process. So quickly, this is another example interesting: the restoration of Marconi Square in uh, San Giorgio Piacentino in Italy. Why is important? Because uh, you see fountains, you don't see any uh, kind of squares. And these fountains, for example, are used, uh, are not only ornamental uh, uh, elements, but they are used for, um, um, for, uh, to guide, they are useful to guide blind people uh, as a potential signal to recognize where they are. This is, uh, we are in Florence in this picture, why I, uh, choose this uh, echo because uh, this is the ramp, but look where it, this ramp is built, it's not correct. Designed, uh, but uh, the people leave this square in front of Palazzo Pizzi, the Palazzo Pitti in a very nice way. And this is uh, the last intervention here in Rome. Uh, so they built uh, the footbridge, uh, they designed the footbridge uh, around all the ruins of uh, uh, market, uh, uh, Traine, uh, Traine market. So even uh, if you are uh, mm, uh, on wheelchair, you can go around and see this uh, uh, beautiful place. So creativity and livability. As I told you before, uh, the people uh, uh, leave the space as they want. Uh, they uh, sometimes they. Uh, they make own the city. This is the bridge, the music bridge in Rome. And uh, in this period also during pandemic time, uh, the people uh, can do gym outside uh, without, uh, you know, um, occupying, the, uh, occupied a space, uh, occupando, occupying, uh, occupying a space uh, that is for other, no, that is for uh, to connect to part of the city, but in this case, it's also a space of work, of uh, say work, sorry, a space of sports. And uh, this is another inter interesting project for me. Uh, we are in Rome, in uh, Tormarancia. Tormarancia is a very, you know, degraded part of Rome. All the buildings were the same, and uh, it's uh, not so uh, safe place where to go, to go around. Uh, they collected a lot of artists uh, and now each building is reco re uh, reconoscible, recognizable, recognizable. And uh, the people before the pandemic time, but uh, the people uh, 
uh, the, 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 the tourists go there and now new activities open um, and uh, um, the, the citizen, uh, they feel more safe because more people go there to see and they feel not so abandoned. It also uh, are very interesting and nice to see this kind of um, murales. By the way, we don't have to forget that we, we cannot cut into our city and the countryside. We have in some way uh, reconnect, reconnect, absolutely reconnect the two parts, especially in this, uh, after this period. And it is necessary, in my opinion, overpass this uh, dichotomy uh, in, and the two and as an architect and engineer, we have to um, propose a multi-sectoral approach focusing on pattern of territorial continuity, which goes uh, beyond the boundaries, to allow the people also to, 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 um, to live in the countryside, but to reach the city easily, for example, uh, to give them uh, the possibility to choose. And this is a very, in our context, uh, for example, in Rome is very, very important. So, uh, to conclude, uh, healthy cities for people. And uh, of course, to achieve this, uh, uh, this uh, big aim uh, is not enough an interdisciplinary plan and design. Uh, is it necessary to activate a, a process of uh, for involving and empowering people in co-dreaming and co-creating healthy people, healthy city? Because the people, the people, we are also people. We are also users, but uh, in, we are um, architects, engineers. So we are, um, uh, you know, we have a different set of mind. Uh, as I told before every time that something new appears in my city, a new building, a new, all the people start to complain, the city say, ah, no, 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 it's not, it's not. So we have, uh, you know, uh, we have to start to think to, not only to design uh, uh, closet in our uh, office, but we have to start to think, uh, to open our mind. And of course, architecture, urban planning, urban design, landscape architecture, environmental design, architectural technology, engineering, medical science, social science, are all disciplines, are all disciplines that can contribute to reach the aim to be the, uh, the, the aim for building an healthy city. And uh, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Now, if Professor Samir allow me, I share in the chat with the students this uh, short survey, and then we can open if you want a discussion. Uh, can I share it? Yes, yes, of course. Okay, it's very simple, are very simple questions. So you can open uh, the... Uh, in, in five minutes, guys, in five minutes you finished. It's very, it's very simple, and we can discuss uh, together the um, the results. And if you have uh, any question, please, after don't not hesitate to 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 tell me. Thank you, Francesca. We will now give the students the opportunity to fill in the the forms. And then we can discuss it. I, I, I really like the final slide, the connection between the city, the, between the urban and the rural area, because this is the biggest problem also here in Zenica. We are an industrial city, but uh, there is a lot of people commuting from the surrounding villages, and there is, because they are distributed, uh, the public transportation is not so good. So this brings in a new problem of the parking space because they all commute by their cars and where to put all these cars while they while they are in the city so this is really a huge problem and we intend to use the next 
two, three uh, presentations, which will be presented by my colleague, uh, Mr. Britvar. He, he mm -hmm. comes from the practice, from the Association of the Architects, and he used to be the Deputy Minister for the Spatial Planning. And this, this, this was one, one, one of his uh, key challenges, how to organize the connection, the commuting between the city and the rural areas. And one of his ideas that he presents is that uh, we should maybe more develop the uh, non-urban centers yes. to uh, allow people uh, uh, to live there without a need to commute. So this is one of the solutions. See, it's very, it's very, you know, uh, um, a topic uh, very it's important. A also, yes, it's a challenge also here in Rome, because you know we don't have connection with the, the other part of the countryside. The people move heavy with the car, and everything. It's a mess. Is uh, you know, we are stuck in. So uh, no one answer to the still answer. If you don't understand English very well, uh, the, 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 the questions are very simple. So maybe you can translate it. I'm sorry. Or maybe I can, I can uh, uh, Samir, I can leave you and then you can discuss okay. it with the students because I don't see any kind of answer. Okay. Uh Samo da pitam student, je li vi ovo popunjavati? Samo nemojte zaboraviti kliknuti na ovo submit na kraju, da imamo makar nešto rezultata. Ja, evo, završavam. They need just a few more minutes to finish it. Ok, we have it. We have it. How is the situation, Samir? Not so good. A few of my colleagues in the same building, in the mechanical engineering faculty, they are positive. One of them is in a bad situation. He has a, a, a lung, pneumonia. Lung, pneumonia. Yes, so it's not that good. Perhaps we will uh, stop all the uh, live classes next week, probably. Uh, here I, I started my classes, but in presence, but I have only four students and the other 19 are connected online. But also here in Rome, the situation is going worse. So maybe we will pass to, we are divided in color. Uh, now we are yellow and not white. So we are, and maybe next week we jump in orange. That means that they have uh, we cannot move uh, so much. but in two weeks i will like, get my vaccine and it's something well there's no vaccine in bosnia for i know at least for the next two weeks two more weeks so i don't know what's going what will happen okay no. Allora, I show with you what I see on my computer. Okay. Za sad imamo samo jedan odgovor, to je samo da pretpostavljam, je li iko drugi još odgovarao? Evo ja pišem zadnji još. They're working on the last one. Yes, yes. I'm not naive.
then I share with you the results. Um, Diciassette, non è vero. Ok. Eh, Samir, if you want, then I share with you the results. Eh? It's ok. It's okay. Maybe it's interesting to you to have it. Okay, please. Uh, where, where will you upload the presentation so we can share it with the students? Uh, of course. I uh, Okay. I send you the presentation and uh, you upload it. Uh, no? Okay, I will upload it also to the Google Classroom because we use it for the for the classes. Okay, I send you the slide in PDF, and you can upload it. Okay. And also the results. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, okay, guys, you. guys, I think we are okay. We can start to. There are some little mistake. Maybe I is not your mistake. Maybe I was not clear. Uh, so. Um, for people, maybe I, I will expect two minutes more, eh? because we are 11, uh, okay, another answer, and then we go on to, do you see the results, uh, my screen? Eh? Yes, yes, we can see it. Okay. We have five okay, now, five. we can discuss then that's great five among the sustainable development goals are according to their definition related to healthy city of course is uh, the third one but also 11 make cities and human settlements inclusive safe resilient and sustainable so um, this is a tricky uh, you know uh, question uh, by the way all the the, the, the scientists, the, the studiosi, the scholars say that it is the eleventh one. Make cities and human settlement inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. And in fact, for that is the the, the eleven goal we discussed in details. If you remember the slide, what is the definition of health? Of course. Health is the state of complete and physical, mental, and social well-being. Does the way we plan and manage the city have an impact on creating a supportive environment? Yes, moderately. So um, some of you think that the, the, the impact is moderately. Others think that is extremely uh, strong impact. You can discuss with your professor, uh, and uh, in this case, there is no a right or a wrong answer, uh, but is it your opinion? Of course, fortunately, no one clicked, not at all, no? Because every hour activity has... Is promoting physical activity across the city one of the aim in planning and designing a healthy city in Zagreb Declaration? Yes, it is. And uh, it is exactly uh, what the yes, uh, transversal aim of the World Tree Core, caring and supporting environment, healthy living, and, uh, uh, and so on. So most of you, most, four, two, okay, they choose the right question. Uh, when I sent to your professor the slide, I suggest you to reread it see the, the, the survey and uh, where you failed uh, some, because of me, because maybe my English not so good, um, the, uh, some question. 
Does LTC building need several competencies in a disciplinary action? Yes. Era tutto yes, but let me see. Yes, it does. And the competencies involved are architecture, planning, urbanism, landscape, engineering, social engineering, economic, and medical science. So in this case, also some competencies missing in the blue and the yellow one, the complete one is the, the, red, uh, the red one, okay? Uh, when you fulfill a survey, you have to read carefully every details uh, of the uh, answers that you have to choose. It's very important. Before you have to read it, everything, and then choose the right one. Hmm? Because also this maybe is a trick. Yes, no, it's, it's tricky, tricky, but it's maybe it's not the language, language barrier, but... Okay, it's important. It's important to read carefully the question. Yes. Did you hear before this lecture about Zagre declaration? No, this is good. I hope you learned something. And someone, yes, one person. Did you hear before this lecture about sustainable development goal? Eh, no, four person. And yes, two persons. So in the middle, uh, it's uh, quite interesting to follow the social media and website and you find in this moment, according with this topic, very interesting um, thinking uh, you know, for your uh, uh, pensieri, for your activities. Ah, the, develop the sustainable development goals are uh, 17. This is the right, they are not 11 but are 16, 17. Okay? And this is uh, the most interesting because as future architects, sorry, engineering, could you describe shortly, uh, make your city healthy, more green area? My city is not really healthy. We have mountains we can, uh, where we can go. Quindi, for is not really healthy. We have mountain. Okay, good planning trees and so on. Where well, you may see there is a lot of greenery area, a lot of space where people can do a lot of activities like cycling, walking. Pretty much an healthy city filled with fumes. We are beautiful river parks and so on. And there are the problem of Zenitza, traffic jam, industrial gases, air pollution, noise pollution, planning without parks, bad materials, and and so on. Bene, look, look, I think it's a way to, uh, in some, uh, uh, Laura, sorry, one moment, I have to share with you one thing again, and then I leave you to your professor, to go on. Uh, okay, as you can see in this slide that I showed you before, the uh, sustainable development goal are 17. The 11 one is what we discussed more. And I don't want to go on more. Only thank you for uh, your attention. And if you have any question or you are interested in this topic, uh, uh, we are all here to, to answer you and to support you. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Geoffrey. Studenti, ako imate kakvi pitanje za profesorcu Geoffrey, recite sad. Ako ne, da, da onda završimo ovaj čas. Nema pitanja. Ok, nema. I understand. We have, we have no questions. Thank you yes, once I again. Understand. And, and see you soon. See you soon. Of course, of course, see you soon and uh, good start, good evening to all the students and uh, do your best because uh, have the opportunity to study at the level university is not for all. So catch this chance and do your best to finalize your study with your excellent professor, Samir. Bye. See you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Samir.
Ok, evo s ovim smo onda završili. Ja ću vam na Classroom objaviti, ne znam, još nismo tačan termin dogovorili, bit će u četvrtak ili u petak narodno predavanje. Ja ću vas na vrijeme, u ponedeljak negdje ću vam objaviti termin da znate kad će biti narodno predavanje. Prezentacije, čim dobijem ovu prezentaciju, ja ću ja uploadovat na Google Classroom. Eto, to je to. Još sam vam samo htio reći na ovom... Na klasrumu objavio sam vam literaturu, odnosno sad ću objaviti u pet sati, i objavio sam vam dokumentaciju grada Zenice. To je nešto što će vam trebati sad kad budete radili na vježbama. Znači imate ono što ja imam, što je do sad bilo na gradskom vijeću, urbanističkih planova, regulacijonih planova, prostorni plan, tako da možete to koristiti iz tog foldera kao nekakve podloge i eto, to je to. Mi se onda vidimo naredne sedmice, ja ću vam u ponedeljak javiti koji će to biti termin. To je to. Doviđenja. 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 Doviđenja.